Coming up on today's show, as the SEC and the DOJ investigate Nikola following the Hindenburg Research Posts, the company responsible for getting Nikola onto the stock market said it did due diligence. Ford teases us with footage of the prototype F-150 electric pickup undergoing testing and says it will be the most powerful F-150 ever. And rumours suggest that Croatian firm Rimac may be about to buy French brand Bugatti from Volkswagen. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. As usual, thanks for dropping by. I had just finished this script and I was about to start recording it when I heard the news of the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was a giant of justice, a voice for the downtrodden and a legal scholar. She will be missed. And if, like me, you're fearing what will happen next and you live in the US, I have some very simple things to say to you. Call or write to your senators, regardless of which party they represent, which party you are, or which state you are in. And to those who complain about me bringing this into the show, you can f unsubscribe. Nobody's playing games and politics affects every aspect of your life. Be involved in making the world a fairer place or deal with the consequences. Thanks go to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and how to accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. As we covered on the show last week, things have got quite interesting of late for electric truck startup Nikola Corporation, thanks in part to a damning report from short seller and forensic financial specialists Hindenburg Research. This week, things got even more crazy, as Nikola admitted that footage of its Nikola One in motion wasn't footage of a powered vehicle, but rather a glider rolling down a hill, and it suffered a pretty substantial market drop as a consequence. I don't have the time to go into all of the developments here, but early on Friday, a board member for Nikola Corp, who was the head of Vector IQ, the special acquisition company which helped Nikola get into the stock market via a reverse merger, says that he's comfortable with the due diligence carried out before the merger. He told the Financial Times webcast, quote, I've driven on electricity, I've driven on hydrogen, and I think they're awesome trucks, end quote. This one is likely to go on for a while, so we'll keep you posted with further developments. Having just survived some truly horrific and dangerous air quality, thanks to the fires raging along the US's west coast, air quality isn't far from my mind, and I bet it isn't far from many of yours too. This week, Volvo highlighted a technology that's been available in its 90 and 60 series vehicles since the spring, an onboard synthetic fiber-based air filter and ionization system for the cabin, as well as an in-cabin air quality sensor. Driven initially by poor air quality outside in countries like China, this technology is Volvo's answer to Tesla's bioweapon defense mode. But rather than just filter the air, it can also display real-time air quality data on the car's center console. Volvo says you can even use your car's companion smartphone app to turn on a deep air cleaning prior to getting inside. As Ford starts production of its new 2021 next generation F-150 pickup truck, it also teased some new footage and details about its upcoming electric variant. Due in 2022, we now know that the electric F-150 will feature dual electric motors, have the same over-the-air dual slot update system as the Ford Mustang Mark E, offer the best performance of any Ford F-150 available today, and come with an impressive acceleration and heavy towing capabilities. With no large engine up front, Ford also confirmed the electric F-150 will feature a large front trunk, a first for a Ford pickup, of course, and will be built as a workhorse, not a show horse. Ford also says the F-150 will come with onboard power generation, read inverter, that will make it possible to power tools from the truck. As someone who lives in a rural area and has a partner who likes to woodwork, I'm very interested in trying one myself. Mercedes-Benz has been building and selling all electric buses for some time, with its e Citaro electric buses now operating on various routes around Europe. 
This week, though, we got a surprise, namely that Mercedes-Benz has launched a brand new articulated version of the Citaro with two battery options, a next-generation superfast charging nickel-manganese cobalt battery with a total theoretical battery capacity of 396 kilowatt hours, batteries which, by the way, can be swapped into existing e-Citaros, or a brand new cobalt-free solid-state battery pack packaging 441 kilowatt hours on board. This makes Mercedes-Benz the first company in the world to bring solid-state batteries to market. Deliveries are due to start immediately with fleet operators in Europe. Electrify America has officially announced its switch from charging per minute to charging per kilowatt hour in 23 US states where it's allowed to do so. Rather than use the tiered system, which will remain in parts of the US where charging per kilowatt hour is prohibited by law, Electrify America will charge upwards of 31 cents per kilowatt hour, depending if you are an Electrify America member or not. Regardless of how full your car is or how fast it can charge, you'll pay that same rate. While this will make charging more affordable for some, it will have the opposite effect for others, and it could lead to people camping out at quick charging stations until their vehicles are fully charged, as people won't be incentivized to move on when the charge rate slows. In states where charging per minute has to remain, there will now be just two tiers instead of the four that previously existed. Electric bus company Proterra, which has been at the forefront of electric buses for many years, has announced its brand new ZX5 electric bus. The fifth generation electric bus to debut from the company, Proterra will offer a choice of two variants, a 35-foot bus and a 40-foot bus. The smaller will have up to 440 kilowatt hours of onboard batteries for up to 240 miles of in-service range, while the larger 40-foot bus will offer up to 660 kilowatt hours for 329 miles of range per charge and service. That's not only enough for an eight-hour urban service route, but it now means that the bus should be more than happy in many larger metropolitan suburbs and maybe some rural areas too. The buses are lower and more streamlined than their predecessors with improvements for both driver and passengers to boot. Earlier this year, we told you about a brand new vehicle-to-grid pilot project being planned for Fiat's Mia Friori production facility in Torino, Italy. The factory, where the all-new electric Fiat 500 has made, has just finished construction and received its official unveiling this week. A collaborative project between energy storage specialists Energy and Fiat Chrysler, the project, featuring 12,000 solar panels capable of generating 6.5 megawatt hours of electricity per year, has 32 vehicle-to-grid charging pedestals, each capable of connecting to two vehicles. Eventually, the project will expand to include enough vehicle-to-grid connections to accommodate up to 700 cars at once, which would make it the largest V2G project in the world. Whenever a new car comes to market, traditional auto dealers who wish to sell that car on behalf of automakers must decide if they're going to invest in the mandated sales and service training, not to mention purchase the service equipment needed to work on the vehicles in order to be allowed to sell said vehicles. How much it costs depends on the car and required service equipment, but this week we learned that Cadillac may ask its high-volume dealerships to pay upwards of $200,000 each to go through the necessary training and upgrades to their service equipment before they can sell and service the 2022 Cadillac Lyric EV. That's a hefty sum to pony up to sell Cadillac's first electric car, and it's feared by outlets like Automotive News that many dealers will just skip the Lyric and continue selling the internal combustion engine Cadillacs. If I was to suggest that a startup electric company was reportedly in talks to buy a prestigious legacy brand like Bugatti, one that's been around for more than 100 years, you might think I'm joking. Yet that's apparently what's going on right now with Croatian electric hypercar specialist Rimac. It's rumoured to have completed talks with Volkswagen about buying Bugatti. It seems bizarre at first. After all, Bugatti hasn't exactly been known for its clean green vehicles. 
Yet the French brand, known for making and selling cars with terrible fuel efficiency and seven-figure price tags, could be a great way for Rimac to embed itself into the automotive industry elite. And it could also help Volkswagen shred a brand that's really not doing much for it anymore, and certainly not for its image. It would also ensure Bugatti goes electric. Now, that is something I have to see. And now, it's time for short shorts. Spy videos taking that the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca seem to suggest that we are about to see a record-breaking lap from the Lucid Air. Lucid hasn't confirmed or denied anything at the moment, but Lucid did include Futured from the track during its reveal event. Talking of tracks, Porsche showcased a 2.1 megawatt hour mobile charging unit designed for charging its Taycan electric cars during a track day event. The company says the unit can provide up to 3.2 instantaneous megawatts to charge 10 cars at once. Volkswagen, which showcased its ID4 undergoing testing last week, has confirmed that it hopes to be making upwards of half a million ID4 cars globally per year by 2025. The ID4 will eventually be made in several factories around the world. Production has already begun. Initial plans have appeared online for Tesla's new Terra factory, or Gigafactory, in Austin, Texas. They show a very similar external structure to Tesla's Giga Reno, although I should caution at this point that it's not clear if these plans will be the final ones that Tesla uses. It's official. Many of you have reached out to confirm that, yes, Deliveries of ID3 have begun in Europe. Those who have got their cars seem very happy and report that there are no issues with the cars delivered so far. This is fantastic news and congratulations if you have a new ride. A new drone video shot at the site of Giga Berlin shows that there's been some significant process made in the last few weeks on Tesla's new production facility. Thanks to Fly Brandenburg for letting us use their video and there's a link in the show notes. Rather than get funding through a reverse merger or a private equity firm, Atlas has announced details this week of its crowdfunding investment drive. It seeks to raise $25 million for its next round of funding and says it isn't interested in going public. A Tesla driver in Alberta, Canada has been charged with reckless driving and speeding after an RCMP cop spotted them seemingly asleep in their car doing 150 kilometers per hour. Some folks have been arguing Tesla's won't let you do that, and he must have been pranking, but honestly, that's something you just do not do. Daimler has unveiled a new concept hydrogen fuel cell truck, which it says will begin commercial trials in 2023. Called the Gen H2, it promises a range of up to 1,000 kilometers per fill. Additionally, the company unveiled a longer range, all-electric version of its e-Actros delivery truck. GM has released details of the five new drive units that will be used with its Ultium drive system to power its future electric cars. The drive units can be powered by one of three electric motors also unveiled, or a combination of them. We'll learn more about it in the future. Tesla has pushed a new software update to customers' cars that now makes it possible to set autopilot to keep your car in the passing lane after overtaking. While that's legal in some markets, it's illegal in others, so I'm going to be interested to see how Tesla is rolling that one out. A grand jury has charged Rafaela Vasquez, the safety driver in the fatal 2018 self-driving Uber crash in Tempe, Arizona, with homicide. She was watching TV on her phone when the accident happened. The trial will take place on January 21. Tesla says it's working to fix a issue with the 12 volt accessory batteries prematurely dying on certain Tesla Model S and Model X cars. The fix will most likely come in the form of an over-the-air software update, and when we know more, I will share. GM has set October 20th as the reveal date for the upcoming Hummer electric truck. As a teaser, it also published a video of a feature we previously didn't know the truck had, crab mode. That means independent all-wheel steering. Release of a promised ground-up rewrite of the Tesla Autopilot software system has been pushed back by Tesla. Described by Elon Musk as a, quote, quantum leap, it's now expected to be released in the next six to ten weeks. 
GM might be interested in entering the autonomous air taxi service. That's at least according to remarks made by GM CEO Mary Barra this week, in which she confirmed that the Ultium battery pack system offered a light and versatile enough battery to be used in a VTOL craft. Volkswagen has confirmed that it's working on an entry-level compact electric car that most people are calling the ID1. While we don't know details, a small all-electric city car designed for busy urban areas would be the ideal replacement for the Volkswagen e-up. Tesla has confirmed that it's already installed 60 power packs at various Electrify America charging sites across the US. By having grid-tied battery packs in situ, Electrify America can avoid demand charges and either offer customers charging when the grid is down. Jaguar Land Rover is rumoured to have delayed production plans for its promised all-electric Jaguar XJ sedan and Range Rover EV, colloquially known as the Road Rover. Restructuring due to COVID-19 is thought to be the blame. And those are your short shots. There will be more next week. Scotland is a really, truly beautiful place. And frankly, if it had decided to leave the UK, I'd probably be living there right now rather than the US. But to explain that would require politics, so I'm going to stop there. Anyway, Scotland, while part of the UK, has a fair amount of autonomy from Westminster, and this week demonstrated that in an amazing way by launching a new interest-free loan scheme designed to help its citizens dump the pump and go electric. The new scheme will offer up to £35,000 to buy a new electric vehicle or £10,000 to cover the cost of a new electric motorcycle or moped. Applicants will have up to six years to repay their interest-free loans to Transport Scotland. And we're promised more information very soon, so watch this space. And finally, particulate pollution is a big problem around the world. And while most people think of tailpipes as being the primary source of pollution, the tyres on our cars, regardless of what they're fuelled by, also produce an insane amount of microparticulates that can affect air quality. What's more, tyre particulates are expected to increase over the next 10 years, or while tailpipe pollution dramatically drops which is where the Tyre Collective comes in, a team of engineers and scientists from Imperial College London and the Royal College of Art. They've just won the James Dyson Award in the UK for designing a special electrostatic device that captures up to 60% of all airborne tyre particles, since the tiny tyre particles from your car tyres are electrically charged when they fly off the wheel. Given that electric vehicles can be responsible for more tyre particulates, due to their heavier weight and their larger torque, I'm really keen to see how this project progresses into engineering prototypes, so watch this space. And on that note, we're done for today. Before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's news show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on making us switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, attend local monthly meetups near you, or find someone to talk about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you feel able, please consider supporting us using the links below. If you already do, you have my deepest gratitude. And if you are unable to support us at this time, just know that interacting with us on YouTube and social media really helps us get the word out. After a short hiatus, we do now have a new t-shirt and merch shop up and running with Redbubble, and we're launching it with some Halloween-themed EV t-shirts, so please check them out by following the links below. I'll be back next week, but in the meantime, please keep yourself and your loved ones safe. Wear a mask, and I'll see you as soon as I can. Keep evolving.